All right, C. Lindelof videos using your TI Inspire. I'm using a CAS, but so your TI Inspire CAS to find the range and domain of a function. The domain part is really easy. On the range part, you have to pay a little bit of attention because you have to do a little trick. So let me show you what I'm going to do here. Um, I'm going to use your calculator. So I'm going to go to my home screen and I'm going to choose calculator. And for the domain part, it's actually really easy. I'm just going to type in the word domain. Keep in mind that when you're asking your calculator to do something, you're spelling something out. If the word is, while the word is in italics, it's your calculator telling you it does not understand that as a command. See where I add the N here, it turns it into standard print, and that is TI's way of saying to you that your handheld recognizes this, this as some kind of command. So let's take something really easy, something linear. So X plus 1. Remember, you have to put, it's really redundant, but you have to say in terms of X, and you hit enter. And of course, we're expecting, look at this linear function, that the domain will be all values of X. And that's what you expect, isn't it? You can you can take the domain of something else. You can take the domain of a you can take the domain of a rational function. You can take and the way I made it a rational is I open it up. I hit Control Division. That's how I got this thing. So x plus one over maybe I don't know x minus three. Use your right cursor here. Remember and hit in terms of x, hit enter, it says, and you have to be able to read this, so you have to be able to read the fact that it's saying to you x can't equal 3, and if, if it, that's all it says, then you can say all x such that x is not equal to 3, so you have to do a tiny bit of work for yourself in wording it, but this is the domain, all x such that x is not equal to 3. Um, so, so that got me to how do I get, how do I get, range. So I tried to type in range, but you see nothing happened, so I realized that wasn't good. I called uh, Texas Instruments and they're like, we don't have a way to do that. So I started working and I realized I can trick this into doing this. So I'm going to trick the calculator into doing this for me. For example, remember that the domain of ln of x is, right, is x such that x is greater than 0, right? Just for all logarithmic functions, the argument has to be greater than zero, right? So I'm like, okay, but well what if I put in y? So I want the domain of ln of x in terms of y. This is just me screwing around trying to figure out how you might do this. When I did it, it gave me domain, which is here. That's We know that's true. And it also gave me the range. So there's not a... There's not a... There's not a range command but you can trick the calculator into presenting that for you. Here's, the pro here's one of the problems I came up with that's kind of not cool, is let's say that I want to just know the domain of, you know what, let me just use log of, log base three of, uh, let's make it, let's make it nonlinear, so let's make it like x squared, minus 9 and hopefully you can see that this is going to be a battle because I'm going to put this in terms of x so I put this in terms of x this works out really good so what we know is that the argument the argument has got to be greater than 0 so if you look at this thing as a parabola you can see that in between two numbers it, right so I hit enter here this is what I expect that x has got to be less than negative 3 or x has got to be greater than 3. So there's that place between these two numbers where the function, including these numbers, where the function can't, this log function can't exist. So I'm like, okay, that works out good. But if you try to get the range and domain of this thing, it just gets to be a little sloppier. You can do it, but you have to kind of pay attention to what you're doing. So I'll put in, I'll do the same thing I did before. I'll put log base 3 of x squared, right? x squared minus 9 right? When I go to here, I'm going to do that trick, right? Because I'm trying to get it to give me the range back. So I do in terms of y. Now I realize this thing is going to give me range and domain, but look at this hellhole that it gives you. Now all of this is true. All of this is true, but it comes in these two parts. It's this part right here, and this is the range of this part, which happens to match the range of this part. But then you have to drag your cursor over and go through here. So if on the exam you're asked for the domain of something, don't do in terms of y because then you're going to get range and domain. But if they ask you for the range, 
the SQL range and domain use this function, use the domain function, but in terms of why. This thing is going to help you score more points on your AP exams, and I'm glad to uh, have the opportunity to help you with it. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know as soon as possible so we can uh, prepare ourselves for victory. Okay, you guys? Proud of you. Keep working. Oh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe.